Good morning grade 2s and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud. We are going to do grade 2 maths together this morning and hope you've had a lovely morning or a lovely day so far and that you're ready to learn with me. If you have any questions throughout the lesson or after the lesson, you can just ask mom or dad to send an email to grade2 at worksheetcloud.com and we will try and answer your questions as quickly as possible. Now my name is Teacher Taryn and today we're going to do graphs together. Now if you have a look at all these bugs, there are some ladybugs, there are some butterflies, there's some dragonflies and there are some bees. But all of these bugs are quite mixed up. They are chaotic, they're all over the place and I can't see where all the ladybirds are or where all the butterflies are or where all the bees are. They are all mixed around. Now, let's see if we can answer some questions about these pictures. The question is, how many butterflies are there? So let's have a look at the picture because I definitely can't just remember from seeing it once. I might have to go and count how many butterflies there are. One, two, three, four, five. Wouldn't it be a little bit easier if all these butterflies were grouped together in one place? I think so. But okay, we've answered the question. It was five butterflies. Let's see if we can answer another question. Which bug is there the most of? Now, if I look at this picture, that's very difficult to just answer very quickly. Because first I'm going to have to see how many butterflies there are, how many bees there are, how many ladybugs. And I definitely can't just guess. I'm going to have to count all of these bugs and then see which one has the most. And that might take a very long time. So let's skip that question. Let's see if there's an easier question the next one. How many more ladybugs are there than bees? Well, now this is definitely a difficult one because first I need to know how many ladybugs there are and how many bees there are and see how many more there are of the one than the other. And that could be very difficult. So I wish there was a way where I could put all of the ladybugs together and all of the bees together and all of the butterflies together and all the dragonflies together. Oh, but there is a way. I can move all of these butterflies into one corner and put them all on top of each other. Now I'm grouping all the butterflies together. Now earlier we said that there were five butterflies. So let's quickly see. One, two, three, four, five. And that was quite easy to count because they're all together on the one side. Now I've put one butterfly in every block. So let's see, can we do the same with the ladybugs? Let's put one ladybug in every block. And then we can count how many ladybugs there are. Okay, so I see that there are five ladybugs exactly the same as the butterflies. And it's quite easy to compare the two because they're right next door to each other. Okay, we've still got the dragonflies and the bees to do. So let's see if we move all the dragonflies together and we group them in one column on top of each other. And now we still have all the bees. So let's move all these bees together and we put one in each block. Now that looks a lot more organized and I can actually see by looking very quickly how many butterflies and how many ladybugs and how many dragonflies and how many bees. And this we call a graph when we put all of the same item together so that we can compare them a lot easier. Now we are going to create our own graph by looking at what modes of transport are going to pass my house. So this is the front window of my house and I'm looking outside and I'm going to have a look and see what passes my house and I'm going to count them. So as I look out the window, let's see what I see. I see one car and there's another car that passes my house and a third car. So there are three cars that went past my house. So now instead of just writing the words three cars, I'm going to go and put them on my table. So this little car over here, that is just going to name 
where I'm going to put the cards. I can't put all the cards wherever I want. I've got to put them all together in the same column. Now there's an important part of writing a graph or drawing a graph. I need to have a heading. So my heading is modes of transport outside my house. So modes of transport, that just means types of transport. So I'm going to have a look at all these different types of transport and each column is going to belong to a different type. Now on this side of my table, I'm going to write numbers and those numbers are going to make it easier for me to, instead of count every block, I can just look on the side and see how many there are of each mode. Okay, so we are now busy with cars and we said there are one, two, three cars. Now I don't even have to count every single picture. I can just look on the side. There are three cars. Okay, let's see what else I see outside my front window. So I'm looking and as I'm looking, I see that there are two children cycling past. And later on in the afternoon, another two children cycled past my window. So that were four children that cycled past my window. So I've got a bicycle here at the bottom and this bicycle is not included in how I'm going to count all my bicycles. That is just a picture to name this column. So this picture tells me this is the bicycle column. And this picture over here tells me this is the cars column. So I can either put a picture over there, but I can also write the word cars or bicycles. So we had four children that cycled past, so we need four bicycles. We're going to put one bicycle in every block. And there's three, and there are four bicycles. Now I don't even have to count every single bicycle. I can just look to the side and see the number four to say that there are four bicycles that went past my house. So let's see what else went past my house. There's an aeroplane that flew past. And later on in the day, another aeroplane flew past. So there were two aeroplanes. So let's go and put it on our table. This aeroplane at the bottom just names my column to tell me this is the aeroplane column. So we need to put two aeroplanes in and one in every block. I don't even have to count that there are two. Even though I can see it very easily, I can count it. But I just have to look on the side to see that there are two aeroplanes. So there's one column left and let's see what else went past my house for this last column. So while I was sitting, there were two delivery vans that drew that drove past my house and later on in the afternoon another three drove past my house. That is five delivery vans that drove past. So I've got a delivery van at the bottom and that picture names my column that is the delivery van column. Now I need to put five pictures to represent the five vans that drove past. Three and four and five. Without even counting every picture, I can look to the side and that can tell me very quickly there are five delivery vans. So now I've completed my table, I've completed my graph. Remember my graph had a heading, it had numbers down the side so I could look very quickly to see how many of each and it had pictures or words at the bottom to name my columns, that this was the cars column, the bicycle column, the aeroplane column, and the delivery van column. Now very quickly, I can have a look and I can compare. There are five delivery vans, but there are only two aeroplanes, and there are only four bicycles, and there are three cars. So now I've organized all these modes of transport in columns of the same group. Now I can answer questions about this and these questions are going to be a lot easier than those questions in the beginning because I've organized them already into a graph. So number one says which mode of transport drove past my house the most? Now I can look and see that there are three cars, 
four bicycles, so bicycles is more than cars, two aeroplanes, but bicycles is still more than aeroplanes, but there are five vans. So five is the most. So the most would be the vans. There were more vans that drove past my house than any other mode of transport. Number two, which was the least. Now I've already looked at all of them and the column with the least pictures is the aeroplanes. There are only two aeroplanes. So the answer to this would be aeroplanes. How many more bicycles were there than cars? Now this is easy to go and have a look at because I don't have to remember how many bicycles drove past or how many cars drove past because I've put them in here in pictures. So there are four bicycles and there are three cars and now I need to see how many more are there of the bicycles. So four and three, it is one more because four is one more than three. So my answer to this question is one. And then the last one says, how many were there all together? Now all together is a clue word and that's a very important word for us to remember because that always tells me that it is going to be a plus. I'm always going to add everything together to find my answer. So now I've got to add all my cars, which are three. I've got to add my bicycles, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So how many were there all together? There were 14 modes of transport that passed my house that day. Now remember, I didn't count these pictures at the bottom because those were just pictures to name my column. They aren't actually part of my graph. Now grade twos, I hope you've enjoyed learning all about graphs with me today and that you've seen how you can use graphs and how you can draw your own graph using things that you can see at home or at school or at a shop or anywhere where you can count and compare things. So I hope you have a lovely afternoon further and this lesson was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. Until the next time I can see you grade twos and we can learn something new together. Goodbye.